The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone, my name is Jillian Schaefer and I'm the Marketing Coordinator for SWK Technologies. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar, Automating the Lifecycle of a Product, presented by Seth Fike of ScanCo. A little housekeeping before we get started. Everyone has been placed on mute to keep the background noise down. However, you can submit any questions you have throughout the webinar. To submit a question, look for the question section in your GoToWebinar. We will answer all questions at the end of the presentation. We are recording this presentation and it will be distributed tomorrow to all attendees as well as to those who registered but were not able to attend. Please take a moment at the end of the presentation to answer our one survey question. With that said, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to attend our webinar. We're here to help you get the most out of your software solutions and help you find an easier way to run your business by providing you software and industry knowledge, tools, and support whenever you need it. We've invited ScanCo here today because they are the industry experts on warehouse and manufacturing automation. So whether you're here doing research for a new solution or you're just here to learn, we'd like to encourage you to ask any questions throughout the webinar. Lastly, as a quick reminder, SWK is constantly sharing important updates and software tips and tricks on our social media channels. So we encourage you to follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Without further ado, I'll hand it over to Seth. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Jolene, and thank you everyone for joining today's webinar. Again, as Jolene said, my name is Seth Fike, and we're going to be going over how to automate the life cycle of a product for Stage 100. If you need to get a hold of me after this, my email address is seth at scanco.com, and like SWK, you can follow me on LinkedIn or Twitter to get updates and notifications. So without further ado, let's actually jump into it. So for those who don't know who ScanCo is, I know there's quite a bit of you that do. Um, I'll give you the quick uh, about us. ScanCo's been in this industry for about 30 plus years, lead in the leader and being the leaders of the supply chain automation. Um, strictly, we were uh, distribution for a long time, but we recently and recently been within the last five to 10 years got to the manufacturing suite as well as a outside sales application. We've continued to advance as a brand and bring these different suites in so that we can be your one-stop shop for any barcoding needs. So whether you're doing distribution, whether you're doing manufacturing, a multi-bin solution, or if you're doing outside sales, we can cover all of them with different complex solutions or we can simplify it. Quick housekeeping for me, um, just to keep us on track. The agenda today is what can we automate? So I wanna talk about some of the actual transactions that we can automate when it comes to either that distribution need, um, which we're really gonna be talking about today. Manufacturing, we'll touch base on it, and then also the outside sales side. How can we do it? Uh, I'm gonna actually talk to you about something I like to say is touch points. I'll explain a little more and just how we actually automate these processes. And then let me show you. So this is what majority of you are here to see. I'm gonna jump into a live demo. And from the time the product comes in to the time we pick it and ship it, I'm going to show you what the software is capable to, of doing. Um, and then we'll talk about some of the advancements we can do as you grow and grow with Scanco. And then we'll leave some time for questions at the end and how to get some more information. So what can we automate? So um, the first thing is obviously the warehouse transactions. That's why we're here today receipt of goods, the put-aways, whether it's directed or if it's a manual process, transfers, and then the picking and shipping. These can all be done from the floor on handheld devices, such as a TC20, such as a Linea Pro device, as well as on a desktop computer with a wedge, wedge scanner or something of that nature. So any of these transactions or these processes that you're doing, we can automate with these devices. Also, we can do label printing. I'll touch a little bit on it, but from the time of receipt, all the way to the time of doing a physical count. We can print a label on the fly from the handheld or off of a desktop on what we would call dash print, which is an outside Sage printing application. Lastly, we can do pack lists. I get this question a lot, so I wanted to just include it. We can print pack lists from the shipping process. Then we can do the manufacturing side of things. So transactions can we do outside of being the developers of production management? outside of being, uh, having our so software solution of operations management, which was uh, Java, we can automate the labor transactions from the floor. This means from the step to the work ticket to the job that we're working on, 
we can track in and out of those steps. The material issues, whether we're doing it dynamically, meaning real time, or if we want to do it through transaction entry, we can scan materials to a work ticket in real time. Otherwise, we would have to do what we, most of you are doing, a back flush, mesh, back flush method of basically issuing materials to that work ticket at the end of the day or at the end of the week, going back, um, updating your registry, and then you have inventory errors. And then lastly, we can do the material completions in these status updates, meaning that we can complete a work ticket to inventory. When we ret return it to inventory, we can select the bin that we want to put it to. Um, we can do it for, by a sales order, so there's different options there. And then the sales order fulfillment, um, we can create sales orders on the fly with our Scanco sales application. We actually have another webinar tomorrow if you're interested on that. Um, Ross Allen's going to be putting that on just to go over some of those transactions. And then the real-time inventory levels. Right now, a lot of your sales reps are calling in to Becky in, in the home office, and Becky is telling inventory levels. Rather, we can see it on a handheld device in real time and see exactly what is an inventory and what the current inventory levels are. How far can we take it? I like this slide because it, it kind of shows you some of the advanced functionality when it comes to Scanco. So all the way down to very simple receipt of goods, picking and shipping, to advanced scanning, such as GS1 barcodes, such as advanced shipping of having true logic involved to do a directed pick. And I'll actually show some of that today of how we can tell that certain items are in inventory and certain items aren't. Dashboards, we actually have a dashboard that sits outside of Sage. The dashboard lets you assign orders and see a real-time flow of what's happening inside your warehouse. And then all of these other transactions and reporting capabilities when it comes to just how far we can take it. So we can do all the way from pallet, to, um, pallet tracking to a true pallet or to inventory adjustments all from a scanner. So as you think of Scanco, and as you think, I wanna start small and grow, that is what the capabilities are. We can start very small and then build with you as your, your company grows. All right, next is how do we automate? And there's that touch points that we talked about. Touch points, again, um, as I talk about it, are anything, anytime someone interacts with an item. This means from the time a raw good comes in to a time a finished good ships out, if someone's touching it, if that product's moving, we want to be able to either scan, look up, key in, or have some kind of touch point of that item. It's just going to cause us to stop losing track and stop losing product. So if we're doing a transfer, we want to scan. If we're shipping something out, we want to scan. These touch points are very important when it comes to keeping real time and keeping accurate levels of your inventory. Barcode scanning, obviously that's how we're going to uh, utilize the software. So we're going to scan barcodes. Again, I talked about GS1 barcodes, compound barcodes, things that we are able to scan um, when it comes to actually moving the, uh, moving the items. Scanning equals validation. I like to put this point because I have a lot of customers that don't want to start scanning right off the bat. They just want to do lookups. When we do scan, we are introducing true validation so that we know if we're scanning the wrong part, if we're scanning the wrong item, the system is going to be smart enough to know. And then the last piece is integration. So this is really important when, it ta when you're talking about a scanning solution that we want to be truly real time, but we don't want any workarounds. Scanco is a master developer for Sage. We've written the barcode module, meaning that we are truly integrated and truly real time. But not only that, things like our palleting system, these are real in implementations integrations with Sage that allow uh, you to not have workarounds and modifications. So as we're talking about any of these transactions, there's no workarounds, there's no modifications, just know that we're truly integrated with Sage. All right, and I blew through those slides a little fast because I wanted to actually get to the exciting part. I know uh, everyone wants to see the demo and see what we can do, but before we go, I want to talk about the transactions we're gonna cover. So I think these are the four main transactions that uh, most people want to see. For one, receipt of good entry, how goods are coming in. Two, how are we putting these in the inventory after we receive them in. And then three, how we're picking and four, how we're shipping. So that's why I named this the life cycle of a product because from the time it comes in to the time it comes out, we're going to automate that and we're going to show you how to do it.
All right. So I'm gonna do a quick flip to my demo system and we're gonna jump into it. So I'm gonna use, be using a scanner. So if you hear any beeping, it's actually me scanning. And I'm gonna go ahead and log in. Now Scanco runs off of Android and iOS. So we are native to the, the Play Stores. So if you went on your phone right now, you could download the application. Obviously you're not licensed and it's not installed in your safe. So there's gonna, you're not gonna be able to utilize it, but um, just know we are native. I'm gonna go ahead and scan in using my unique credentials, pulling my profile settings. Select the company and you're gonna be with, introduced into the interface. Typically when I do a demo, I'm going to turn off certain things that you wanna see based on the discovery call because the software isn't a CAN solution. Um, it really can be molded to the transactions that you wanna do. But for today, I wanted to just show you some of the capabilities. So we're gonna start with that receipt of good, and you'll notice all the different receiving icons because of the capabilities that we do have as your business grows. So just keep that in mind. But we're gonna do a receive by order today, meaning that we're gonna have a purchase order that we're receiving off of. This purchase order can be barcoded, we can look it up, but for time purposes, I went ahead and already created one and it should be there we go all right so there's my items that are on my purchase order and again i'm going to be doing this all in real time so we're going to go ahead and receive this purchase order in so i'm going to scan it's going to pull the information now here i could do a lookup i could key in or i can just start scanning Let's do it a little quick just to see how fast we can do it. Boom. So let's slow it down just a little bit to show you what we did. So I selected my item that was on that purchase order. The system validated it. I selected the bin that we're going to. The system defaulted to my receiving bin. We are talking about a multi-bin environment today. Then this was allotted item. So I'm selecting a lot. And then I actually have a vendor lot enhancement turned on that allows us to track a vendor lot that's associated with that lot. Let's go ahead and select my quantity. And for validation purposes, let's do a greater amount. The system knows this is not the correct amount. Based on my profile settings, it will allow me to over receive. But today we're not gonna over receive. We're gonna do the correct amount. Now, if I did a quick lookup, you can see that I have a thousand received in. I have one item left. A fun little thing I like to do is show you how real time we are and how we don't lock out POs. So I'm in Sage right now under this purchase order. You can see that nothing is populating here because those are my two items. We're just going to add one more item to it. And we'll just do a quantity of 10. We'll accept it in. We'll back out. And we'll update it in real time so we don't lock out that purchase order so now that item is there let's go ahead and receive in that item my receiving location and then the quantity so this was a standard evaluation no lot associated no serial go ahead and receive it in let's scan in the other item boom here's my lot Here's my vendor lot and then my quantity. Once I'm done there, I can go ahead, confirm this in. And this is where everyone wants to see that receipt of good transaction done. So my system creates that receipt. Here's all the items. And again, we're in a multi-bin environment. This means we have multiple bins throughout our warehouse. This means if I use my distribution chart, you can see the lot number that I scanned in. You can see the receiving location that it's in, as well as the vendor lot. Now that this good's actually in, we're gonna have to post it because we wanna transfer this. So let's go ahead and run a post. Again, I want to show you the life cycle of these specific products. So there's all my products. Go ahead and exit, update the registry, and then we'll move on. 
And again, throughout any of this, if you have any questions, go ahead and shoot them below um, or save them for after and I'll be happy to answer them. All right, so now that these goods are in, we can do a, go into item maintenance and we can see the, those goods. Oops, I'll just go do it this way. So if we wanted to go into the particular item, we can do it a couple ways. If we wanted to see it from the bin level, we could see everything in that bin. Let's just go ahead and see that I have 1,010, so I actually had 10 already, in that with that lot associated with it. Now we need to put them away. So they're sitting in my receiving location. Let's go ahead and actually put them away. I'm gonna go ahead and hit transfer. And again, as you see all the capabilities as you grow, but today we're just gonna do a warehouse transfer or a bin transfer. Select the bin, excuse me, select the warehouse, and then let's actually select the same warehouse. We're doing an internal transfer, so a bin to bin movement. If we wanted to do a warehouse to warehouse movement, we have that capability as well, of course. And then the bin from. So we're gonna do receiving, and then let's do to a shipping. Now, validation, we talked about it. I scan the wrong item, the system knows. Let's scan a correct item. The system knows that it's correct. Validation, let's scan something, a lot number that's not right. We know that it's not correct. We're gonna cause the people that are using these to select and scan the correct items, correct lots. Let's go ahead and select the correct lot. And we'll do a lookup because we haven't really done too many lookups. And you can see that all of these lots are associated. And then how many do we want to move into that primary location? So that primary pick location. Let's just do a thousand. Do my next item. Do my next lot. And we'll go ahead. So not only are we quick when it comes to scanning, we also are validating. So those are my two. Um, if I wanted to go ahead and do my rat or my cup, I would, but I'm just gonna stick with those two. We're gonna hit the send button, just confirming that we're complete with the transfers. Because they're a bin to bin movement, this is not hitting transaction entry, this is happening in real time. So if I went back into my item maintenance and I went back to that particular item, you can see I only have 10 left. You can see the lot number that's associated. So here's my thousand. If we wanna run an audit trail, we can do a multi-bin history report and see all the transactions that have happened for that particular item. So in real time, we moved a thousand into this primary location. So now that these items are in their primary location, now we have to pick and ship them. Again, following the life cycle of a product. I went ahead and created a sales order. I'm just gonna confirm that it's the correct one. And should be 43. Same items that are associated with it. Quantities of five. And let's go ahead and pick and ship them. Now we're gonna do a directed pick. Directed pick for us means that the system is gonna tell you where to go based on your bin levels. Now we have a quick picking option that's more of a freestyle location or freestyle pick. If you want more information, again, feel free to reach out to myself or Jolene or whoever you work with at SWK to get more information. So sales order 43 on the handheld. We're gonna do a pick and again, a directed pick meaning order picked and the prompts are gonna be very similar. It's gonna ask me my warehouse I'm working in to scan, look up, or key in the sales order. I have my sales order in front of me and I have a barcode on it. So let's look at all this information that just popped up. First of all, it's telling you the bin to go to. So worker Joe is going to bin 100A, scanning my GSK-1000, and we have a quantity of five from that bin that we need to pick. I'm gonna keep harping on it. A validation, we picked the wrong item. Go ahead and scan the correct item. 
scan the correct item a lot that's associated with it incorrect lot let's grab a right one this is the lot the thousand that we just scanned in and then the quantity that we're actually shipping or picking excuse me what you'll notice is it went to the next item now I just I don't have the demo set up this way but if I only had three in that bin it would tell me to pick the remaining two from the next bin that's associated. So an overflow location it could be, or another primary pick. Let's scan the correct item. Let's scan the lot number associated with it. And then the quantity. And I'm just gonna slow down a little bit because I am moving a little fast and we're getting towards the end. After I'm done, the system knows, hey, you scanned everything. You picked everything. Go ahead and hit success. If I pull up that sales order inside of Sage, you can see that we've allocated those items. And again, multi-bin environment that we're talking today. So that lot, that vendor lot that we talked about is all attached to that item. Now, if you have expiration dates, we can also capture that and track that as well. Now that the items are shipped, we need to, or picked, we need to ship them. So let's get out of the sales order. Let's back out and go to shipping. Today, I'm gonna to use shipping data entry. If you have or use invoice data entry, the process is going to remain the same. The only difference on the scanner is it's gonna ask for a box level detail. So my shipper ID is gonna be one, and then my sales order. If I wanted to see all of the sales orders, I could do a quick lookup and see every open sales order that needs to be picked, or that's been picked. Today we're gonna to do my, the one I just did. Box one, there's that box level detail we talked about. And then item, prompts are the same. Let's do a lookup and see everything that's on that sales order. So I have my rubber, my rubber gaskets, they're different part numbers, but the system's smart enough to know that they are different parts. If I do a lookup on this bin, you're gonna notice that it's highlighted green. This is because it's been picked, it's been allocated for that order. Similar to the bin, it's a lot. You can see all of the available lots, but it knows this is the lot that's been picked for, that, for this particular order. Let's make sure, it's the second audit point quantity, I did a quantity of six to make sure that the system knows, hey, this is wrong. Go ahead and hit the correct quantity. If you wanna overship, it's a profile setting that allows you to do it, do so. When I do my next lookup, you can see there's only one item left on this, this um, sales order to be shipped out. But what if we wanna do a different box level or box test? All you have to do is select the box, and go scan, look up, or key in the item. It's gonna to default to that bin again, and then the lot associated with it. Go ahead and just scan that lot. Now we're done with this sales order. We're gonna send it through to Sage. And in real time, again, what we're doing is we're creating the shipping data entry inside of Sage. So we're eliminating the data collection portion that somebody's typically doing. I'm gonna hit my shipper ID. Let's go find that sales order. My shipment is now fulfilled. There's my multi-bin distribution chart that we talked about earlier. So here's the five of the thousand that I received in earlier. This is the specific ones that I received in. Also, we collect the box level detail. So you can see that this is in package two and the, and the other gaskets in package one. At this point, you run your post, you invoice however your process is, and you're on your way. Now, a question I get a lot 
is, is there a way to run a traceability report based on um, the vendor lot or a lot that's associated with it? Yes, there is. So if I come into here and I go to my inventory management, you can see that there is a vendor lot serial report that we can run off of that. So based on the filters that you set up, let's go ahead and grab this one. You can run a report based on it. Now, obviously I only have 500 on hand, but you'd be able to see any recalls that, uh, that you may have coming in. And because we have time, I wanna go over the physical count portion as well for the actual demo. So, typical process when it comes to physical counts is you're working out in the physical count worksheet. Uh, this has been sent to whoever, Worker Joe, again, and collecting it. This is, once this information is collected on a clipboard, it's handed in and somebody has to enter it inside a save, so physical count entry. What we do is we take out the pen and paper method and we allow you to collect the information or the items or the lots, whatever information needs to be collected for a particular item on a scan, scanner and read into physical count entry. So today I'm gonna to use count by bin. Again, a multi-bin environment. It's gonna ask for a starting bin. If I do a lookup, I can see all the bins that are in, in my warehouse. We're gonna start at this primary bin and then we're gonna start scanning items. So here's my lot. What I want you to notice is we are doing a blind count. So it's allowing me to select any lot. We do this on purpose. The best business practice is to do a blind count. We want accurate in inventory levels. Let's go scan a lot and a quantity. Another thing to note, if you have multiple people scanning, you can have it, it, the inventory levels stack. What does that mean? When I'm scanning 100A, if Joe and Susie are scanning 100A, if Joe scans 10 and Susie scans 10, there's now 20 being collected. So you can have multiple people working on different sections of your warehouse at one time and stacking onto each other. It's really nice and a big time saver when it comes to actually doing this. When I'm done with this particular bin, you can hit this next bin, oops, next bin, and go to the next bin that's in line. So 100B is my next bin. Let's go ahead and scan some more items. Again, the system is validating that that is an item. It's collecting that lot. And we're on our way. When you're done inside a Sage, we're collecting it in the physical count entry field. This is a normal process that you would usually follow. And I had some other items, but as you can see, there's my thousand that I just counted for there. And then my other, my other, oh, uh, there's 100B. Uh, there's my other hundred that I just counted. So if I went ahead and counted on the scanner, I'm back on the scanner, a hundred more of GSK 100. Grab the right one, there we go. And we wanted to scan, let's scan a different lot. Make sure this is a different lot, there we go. And let's scan 12. When I send it through to Sage, I accept out of it. There's my 112 that I counted. All right, so. As far as the warehouse transactions go, those are the main uh, pieces I wanted to show you today. From the time that good came in, collecting the vendor lot. Also, again, we can collect expiration date. The transferring. If we wanted to do something like a directed put away, we have that option as well. The idea here was to give everyone an idea of what the capabilities were on the floor. And then if you have any more questions, please feel free to reach out to myself to set up a true discovery, a real demo where I can dive into your exact processes and show you how the scanners work according to your processes. So um, I really appreciate everyone's time today. 
Again, please reach out to myself, Jolene, or whoever you work with at SWK um, to get more information. If you have any questions, this will be the next, uh, this will be the time to answer them or ask them. Thank you, Seth. We'll now open it up for questions. If you have any questions, please enter them into the question section of your GoToWebinar. And we'll give that a minute in case any come through. And just to remind everyone, we do have a subject matter expert here. This is a great opportunity to have your questions answered in real time. And we do have a few that came through during the presentation, Seth. The first being, I didn't see anything on physical counts. Can you automate the data collection on the scanner? So yeah, so actually, uh, I don't know if you just missed it, but I did just go through that physical count portion of it. Um, we can automate that physical count piece of it um, from the data collection side. So you're still gonna run out of that work uh, that worksheet or however you're you're running it now, but we're going to automate the collection. It's going to save you a lot of time and ultimately time is money. We have another. Is there a way to report on the vendor lots that you are collecting? Yeah, that was that. Uh, that's a great question. And again, this is why I actually showed it. Um, that's a quite, that's something I get a lot. In that vendor lot piece, you're able to pull a report based on either the vendor lot, the serial number, or if you want, you can actually filter it by that uh, expiration date to see if something comes in that's expired, something that's been recalled, you can pull a report to see it. And we have another. In the P-O-R-O-G, where is, where is the barcode scan coming from? So I'm assuming, and I'll actually move my screen, we're talking about the mobility for barcode. So I have this running in the background. It's called the easy import. And what it's doing is this is holding the data, and then as soon as I'm done collecting it, we're filling the fields inside of Sage. So this is where that uh, being a master developer comes in. We wrote this easy import to talk with the scanners. Um, the nice part about this is we don't hold any of the information on the scanners or lock it out. So if one of these scanners breaks right now, I could just pull up another scanner. That information is not lost, and we didn't just lose a day of work. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Seth, for your informative presentation and for taking the time to be here today. For more information on ScanCo, please check out our website at swktech.com and click on ScanCo under the Warehouse Management in the Products tab. Thank you, everyone, for attending our webinar. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, everyone.